All right, here we go on Idika Trial Run, one of the four off-road tracks created by me that you could have voted for on July 31st. And there have been no incidents through Turn 1, so this train of monstrous metal snakes its way through this series of opening corners, which are honestly such a pleasure to drive, and I say that from a completely unbiased standpoint. There are two lines to take and everybody is currently tussling for position. Jodkiev was mounting an early attack around my outside there, but I managed to hold it. Defiance Wires hasn't though, and he's the first to lose control over the dip as we drop into this swinging uphill left-hander. There was no contact there, just a bit too heavy on the throttle, I think. And as we come up to the hairpin, just look at this beautiful photo taken by AWES7, the current leader who started from the back, and with the exception of Defiance, who just had that minor spin there, we've got 14 phenomenal drivers captured in one still image, which for me symbolises everything that Children of the Mountain is about. Innovation, control and respect, all in one photo. What more can I say about the level of skill put on display by the guys in Division 1, usually each and every week? It really is incredible stuff, a true team effort, so pat yourselves on the back once again Division 1, you've put on an incredible start there. Right now things were getting particularly busy and the downhill off camera hairpin is approaching which tests everybody's breaking points, but I didn't even think twice when I saw that gap emerge. As long as I bring this to a stop at the apex, which I've managed to do, we should see a promising result on the other side. But miraculously, all three drivers held it around the outside. I have literally gained zero positions. Now for this next downhill, it's crucial to straighten up as early as you can, to concentrate on timing your gear shifts correctly, which I've just about managed to do to get the slightest advantage over Charles, and as a result, he's had to yield. Still, I left him some space coming onto the bridge, and that got me into a hairy two-wheel moment there, scratching the red containers, but not counting Defiance's spin, my first overtake of the race was complete. On to lap two, and we're chasing down the stakes horse, who's new to Division 1, doing a fine job for now, but just up ahead, G Gamer and Picano have been caught out by the crest, throwing them out wide, there's G Gamer trying to rejoin the track, so we're up to 7th, and look what we have here, a limping Picano trying to regain his speed, but from the smallest mistake, this unstoppable train of Macy, MC West, Stakes Horse and myself has come charging through, up the inside, and he's just lost 4 positions like that. And as if this action wasn't tasty enough, the heavens have opened and the rain has started to pour on an off-road track which has a downhill grass-based hairpin, driving a car which nobody bought upon its release because of its notoriously bad brakes. Bring it on. If I know the track, I love these conditions. I've even switched back to L2 braking just for this race. However, right now there doesn't seem to be any way through. But Stake Sauce seems to have found one for MC West, but he's going to run off rather wide here, and he's got to be careful because those rocks await him at the bottom, and he's been able to hold it, but at the cost of losing his newfound position to MC West. Now, if I line this bridge up right, I should access maximum revs before he will, which should give me the run on him into the fast left-hander, and that certainly seems to be happening, but this is not a flat-out corner, especially in the rain, and there's the slip! A brawler with off-road tyres on a wet tarmac surface with full load on that suspension and it's just going to go. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's a, a treacherous few laps ahead of us until this rain cloud goes away. This is going to be one hell of a test for any driver as Stake Source gives me the nudge into turn one, not allowing me to test the parameters of my car's traction because I want to take it a bit easier. I want to slow down the pace until I start to feel comfortable with the car, which, judging by this apex, I clearly am not. What was I just saying about loving these conditions? Macy's driven Away. Meanwhile, I'm under threat from Stake Sauce, and now you cheer. So I'm not the only one to have come from the back and made good progress so far. I am being followed, and in fact, after being bullied out of this corner and running wide there, you cheers closed me off at the hairpin, and I'm going to have to hold off. So the weather has gone against me, a position down, but is this just because people aren't adapting to the rain yet? Well, there's one corner I can think of to put that to the test, and I don't think Steak Sauce was quite ready for it, as he's gone sailing down into the gully. Uchiha seems to have made better work of it, but that hairpin definitely served as an eye-opener for the entire pack, as the rain's intensity increased, and we're not even at maximum downpour yet. But MC West has had an incident with the tree, and that's given me a freebie. Two positions gained, just like that, as we come down the bridge onto the beach. Now I knew Uchiha would still charge, so I moved to the inside to defend, but I couldn't see a goddamn thing. Ran over all those bollards, which really threw me off, but not as much as it threw Uchiha off. The bridge! Holy shit! And hold on just one second, that was Frink behind him, and I would bet my socks that AWES 7 is somewhere within close proximity as well. I swear, one mistake against these guys is all it takes and they just gobble you up. Uh, having said that, it does look like a gap has just formed behind us, and I later found out that Defiance went way too heavy on the brakes, locked them up, 
and straight lined the braking zone for the final U-turn, taking Frink out of the equation in the process. Now, I never want to see my rivals taken out under such circumstances. Ah, who am I kidding? Get him again, Defiance! Just tap him on the bridge next time and see what happens. <laughs> Have you seen this rain? Look at those clouds! Macy's drifting to defend. It's like we're driving on ice. I've got R2 pressed down at about 25% and that was a, a lovely pass off the inside. But this is just a balancing act. Delicately applying both the accelerator and the brakes. Mad understeer on the barges in the rain as the wheels beg you to do anything but turn. And Racing Benji is still in first place. What a performance from the guy who barely made it through from Division 2. And look at this, they've both gone sliding into the barrier and Benji has taken a heavy hit there as Ryan takes the lead. So it's absolutely pouring it down now and the braking zones are becoming earlier and earlier. Now thank God I had those two there as a reference because I probably would have gone and done the same thing myself if they hadn't been. So I started in 10th and I was able to pick up a couple of positions quickly from Defiance and Charles. After that, MC West with the tree gifted me a couple of positions. Then Combo took the request, go throw yourself off a bridge, quite literally, and we got the position there. That lamppost was a cause for concern. After that, we had a hard-fought battle with Macy during the worst period of the rain. It seems to be settling down a little bit now as we close up to leader Meh Ryan. Now obviously Ryan and I already have a rich history in this series and we've engaged in several side-by-side -side battles before. He infamously kept me behind him for countless laps in the finale of Season 1 which I felt kept me off the podium. So how am I going to get round him this time? Well he's botched the braking for the hairpin once again but to his fortune it is better to be where he is because on the outside now it's going to get pretty bumpy. So I'm going to have to try and hang this around the outside then line myself up quickly to maximise the short shifts down the bridge. Tough to do with another engine in your ear though, and that slide onto the beach is going to be just enough for Ryan to hold on to the lead. Stunning defence once again from Meh Ryan, completely unfazed under pressure. Speaking of pressure, Macy out of nowhere has all sorts of speed, forcing me to defend into the slippery left-hander. Saw some careful throttle control, saw to it that I didn't slip. I was late on the brakes and ran it right up to the barriers and this helped me defend the position. And in turn, it gave me a fantastic run on Ryan, but I've got nowhere to go with it. So I had to go around the pole before heading straight back over to the right because I need me dem wall boosts. And this is only lap six. There's 13 more to go and I'm bloody exhausted. So as we approach turn one for the sixth time, Ryan misses his apex and bounces off the container whereas me and Macy have absolutely smashed it and we've both got a run on him but he's built up just enough speed to cover off the inside so we're both going to have to drift out relatively wide here and completely back off to make this apex because although there's a camber advantage, it is still raining and it's so hard to get these things to turn. And in all the commotion, I haven't even realised that I've entered first because as far as I'm concerned, the hard work isn't over yet because I've still got two incredibly fast drivers right on my tail which is why I'm pressured into going wide here and at the hairpin you can see that Macy and Ryan are going at it I pray that Ryan got that position because I know how good his defending is and I think that I have the possibility of driving away from Ryan whereas it might be a bit more difficult with Macy as he's showing incredible consistency and fortitude in these wet conditions I've never seen Macy drive so well now with the rain coming to an end it was going to come down to which driver could adapt to the dry conditions the fastest to which I'll say keep your eyes on the timer and check this shit out <laughs> Okay, let's take a ride on board with one of these.
Whoa, whoa! One thirty point three, bitch! Try and keep up with that, bitch! One second faster than the entire division, bitch! Ain't nothing stopping me now, bitch! Oh shit! Don't you even act like they aren't the exact same thoughts that run through your mind when you're driving. I know the moment you step onto Call of Duty, you are that nine-year-old racist kid from Texas screaming TEABAG! TEABAG! down your microphone, so don't you judge me. Right, we're in the pits, ready to go, and here come my closest rivals on the same strategy, A, Wes and Macy, and who on earth is that? There is absolutely no way I've been outpaced by- Oh, it's just Racing Benji unlapping himself. Ooh, you had me going there, Benji. Don't do that to me. What happened to you, anyway? At the 15-minute mark, you were first battling Ryan. How did you lose an entire lap in 20 minutes? Well, regardless of how it happened, thank you for letting me by easily. And, folks, I haven't won a Children of the Mountain race yet, and I've had Bruffy Syndrome. Can't win his own sod in events. Hey. <laughs> but on this day, in the 12th race we've ever done, 4th race of this season, order has been restored. I can rest easy for the mid-season break, and it might have taken a selection of my hand-picked tracks to do it, but at least I can finally say I've been a Division 1 winner. So, from 10th place on the grid, I worked my way to 1st, through the storm, which made this race feel a lot longer than it actually was. Felt like a race of two parts. I had so much to deal with in the opening laps, and then was able to essentially hot lap the next few laps, leading up to that big crash I had. But looking at the fastest laps of everybody else, those laps I put in must have stretched out one hell of a safety net in case anything like that did happen. Absolutely thrilled with my pace, and very satisfied with this win, because I really feel like I earned it. Meanwhile, in the neighbouring lobby of Division 2, BC Eagles guy was driving his way to yet another victory, holding off Crazy Chris, who was driving as a reserve for Crow Gamer, because Chris is in Division 4 these days, we'll see him a bit later. But other shock results consisted of Mike beating Sean L, although with two reserves in front of him, Sean L is still going through to Division 1, but what he isn't, and Headshot's downward spiral continues. Division 4 saw the debut of the Desert Raids, which were the fastest vehicles of the weekend, so with someone like Crazy Chris in this lobby, you had to assume that he was gunning for those 10 bonus purple points, as well as the victory, and that's exactly the way it played out. That's him in the orange, and keep an eye on his car, because it turns into the path of Mai coming back, who was fighting for survival. How unfortunate is that? Supply GTA has been driving well in the waiting list races and now he's a podium finisher in Division 4, as is Dylan. I love how everybody reacts with something as they cross the line. Mini Tempo was back, finishing fourth, and the final promotion spot goes to Thal, another driver from the waiting list. So congratulations to those guys because this was by far the most competitive Division 4 we will ever see. Druba in sixth, Jamie LFC was disappointed with seventh, Dodger there picked up eighth, Shady Fruit was near the front for some of the race, but he fell back to ninth, and a returning Whitey White picked up the final spot in Division 4. Sadly, we say welcome back, and farewell to my coming back. Good lord, that attire is illegal. 28.3. Nobody was catching that. I don't care who you are, where you're from, or which vehicle you were driving. 28.3 wrapped up the fastest points of the weekend, and over in Division 3, FBIS Sosa was back in action, cleaning up once again. I believe that may be his second victory in a COTM race, picking up the fastest lap as well. And as these guys were also driving the brawler, you can compare their lap times with Division 1 to get an idea of how they would fare at that level. Uh, but look who's directly underneath FBI. The same two members of the Jamaican Wagwan team that finished second and third in the previous Division 4 race, so those two came from the back to do that. This resurgence of sweat racing has certainly seen Celtic and JB step up their game. Digster got through at the start and had a relatively lonely race, whereas AD Horse grabbed an overtake for fifth and was overjoyed to be going through to Division 2. The waiting list race is getting slightly more popular. I've got a surprise in store for you guys in the rambling recap, so look ahead to that. I would have loved to be in this race just to drive the MTL June around Ideka. What a fantastic addition to the off-road class. That's going to wrap up my highlights of race 4. Almost up to date, I promised I would try to get back on top of these, and here we are. Ignore the outdated text on screen, and I'll see you in the rambling recap.